Okay, so here is my video for Reimagine Time Day 8. For today's lesson, we're going to learn to do synthetic division, and we're going to learn what the remainder theorem is. The remainder theorem just simply says that if you've got a polynomial f of x, and it's divided by x minus k, then the remainder can be found using substitution, substituting k in, which means take the opposite of what you have here, just like we did when we were doing the um, uh, finding the p's and q's when we're doing intercept form. You take the opposite of this number and you substitute it into the function to find the remainder. That's all the remainder theorem um, is. And it's a quick way to find the remainder or to match answers without actually doing long division. So uh, let's go through some examples. Your first examples that we're going to do in these notes are found on Student Journal, page 89. And we're going to be doing, this is Reimagine Time Day 8, we're going to be doing these four examples for synthetic division. And you'll probably have more than plenty of room here, although I did write these on another piece of paper. And then we're also going to do all of these examples on the back. And those will go quickly, but that's what we're going to do for Reimagine Time Day 8 work. And please um, post your pictures of your work on Google Classroom. Um, that way, you know, I can go ahead and check if you have it. And if you post your pictures, you do not have to turn in your work when we get back a hard copy because you'll, you can just put it straight in your notebook. Okay, so here we go. Just like long division, you want to make sure your dividend has all the variables represented. I have x to the second, x to the first, and then I have no x. And then here I do, um, my divisor is okay. One thing I want to point out about synthetic division, this is difficult, I'm sorry if this is kind of crazy. Um, one thing I want to point out about synthetic division is the fact that you must have a linear divisor in order to do synthetic division. If this is an exponent other than one, then we must um, we must use long division. So to set this up, here's what you do first. You find your divisor here. The divisor is just a constant. You take the opposite of this number, just like I was just discussing with the remainder theorem. Um, the, the reason why you take the opposite is the form is x minus k. That is the given form, so x minus 2, k is 2. And so you're going to put that number in this little box here. And then you're only going to put the coefficients of your dividend. The coefficient is 1 negative 10 and 2. That's a constant coefficient. Then you leave a, yourself a space and draw a line. Leave space to write numbers here. Then what we're going to have when we finish, these will be the quotient. And this will be the remainder. And then we'll write it in the correct form, and I'll show you how to do that. The process for synthetic division is bring down the first one. Synthetic division is just a process of steps of multiplying and adding over and over and over until you're finished. So you have to bring down the first one, and you multiply 2 times 1. So you multiply this number here, the constant by the numbers on the bottom, and you put that answer here. 2 times 1 is 2, and then you add. Negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8, and then you multiply. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, and then you add. 2 plus negative 16 is negative 14. Now, to talk about my final answer, I just can't write 1, negative 8, negative 14. Here's what you do. 
Remember, we're dividing the first term by the first term. What is x squared divided by x? Well, that is x. That is the variable that you use in your quotient. So this variable comes down here. And then you go in descending order after you get that variable. So an x to the first power is going to go here and then x to the zero power, and then my remainder. So my answer here is going to be x subtract eight. My remainder's a negative, so I'm gonna put minus 14 over remainder over the original divisor, x minus two. And that's the quotient for the first one. Let's look at the second one. Do I have every variable represented? Three, two, one, none. Yes, I do. So then I take the opposite of this number, negative two, and I put it here. I put the coefficients and the constant, one, four, six, four, one, four, six, four. Draw a line, draw a line. Bring down the first one, multiply. One times negative two, put that answer here, is negative two. Add, four plus negative two is two. Multiply, negative two times two, negative four. Add, six plus negative four is two. Multiply, negative two times two, negative four. Add, four plus negative four, is zero, which means no remainder, yay. So I won't have to add remainder over divisor because I don't have a remainder. Now to figure out what variable I put here, remember you're going to divide first term by first term. What is x cubed divided by x? x cubed divided by x is x squared. So that's what's gonna go here. x squared goes here. And you don't have to write this here, you can just write it in your final answer. x squared goes here, x to the second, x to the first, and no x. So my quotient is x squared plus two x plus two. And I want to point out, just because sometimes, you know, we math teachers assume, I know to put a plus sign because that's a positive. I know to put a plus sign because that's a positive. This was, if this were a negative, I'd put a subtraction sign. That's my quotient. Now, looking at number seven, I need to put my missing variables into my dividend. I have 2x to the third. I'm missing an x squared, so I need zero x squared. I'm missing an x, so I need zero x. And then I need 50, uh, minus 54. Oh, I think I also forgot to mention, not only does my variable have to be linear, but the coefficient of my um, leading term in my divisor must also be one. And so, if it's not one, I have to divide everything by that to make it one. And I don't think we have any examples in this textbook um, so far that you have to do that. There may be one in your um, Reimagine Time Day 9 work. If there is, try it. You just would divide everything by that coefficient to make it one. And then I'll, I'll go over it in case you miss it. Okay, so let's set this up. The constant I need is negative 3. It goes here. Bring down all my coefficients and my constant, 2, 0, 0, negative 54. Draw a line, draw a line. Bring down your 2, multiply. Negative 3 times 2, negative 6. Add 0 plus negative 6, negative 6. Multiply 3 times negative 6, negative 18. Add 0 plus negative 18, 
negative 18. Multiply, that's an 18. Negative three times negative 18 is positive 54. Add, and there's a zero remainder again. So now, let's again think about what my coefficient's gonna be here. Remember, you're dividing first term by first term, dividing first term by first term. And watch, even when I, if I use that coefficient, 2x cubed divided by x is 2x squared. So x squared goes here. x to the second, x to the first, no x. So my quotient is 2x squared minus 6x minus 18. The typical question that students ask is, Mrs. Bibb, why? Why do we have to learn how to do long division? Because many students struggle with long division of whole numbers. And then when you throw variables in there, it just makes it even tougher. You have to learn long division because not every divisor is linear. So you have to know how to do um, synthetic division and long division because the requirement for synthetic division is your divisor must be linear. It will not work if it's not. So that's why we have to learn long division. Okay, looking at my last example, four, three, two, one, none. And of course this meets my criteria. It is linear and the coefficient is one. So all I need to do is find um, the opposite of four, the opposite of negative four, which is four. That is my constant I'm using to divide. Bring down all my coefficients to negative 11, positive 11, four, and four. Bring down your first term. Multiply, four times two is eight. Add, negative 11 plus eight is negative three. Multiply, four times negative three is negative 12. Add, 11 plus negative 12 is negative one. Multiply, four times negative one is negative four. Add, you get zero. Multiply four times zero is zero. I forgot my vertical line. Four plus zero is four. So I have a remainder of four. I don't have a constant. Now let's find out what my variable is of my leading term. We're gonna divide those two. Two x to the fourth divided by x would be two. Two divided by one is two. 4 minus, three, 4 minus 1 is 3, so 2x cubed. So x cubed goes here, x to the second goes here, x to the first goes here. There's not a constant in my remainder. So my quotient is 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus x. You don't have to put the plus 0. Then you put a plus because it's a positive. Remainder over divisor, x minus four. And that is how you do synthetic division. I'm hoping that one of the examples from the textbook, oops, one of the examples from the textbook makes it to where this coefficient is not one. If not, then I'll do an example on a video and post it for you so you can see, because you will definitely encounter that in um, pre-calculus or um, your college math class that you will be taking.